Hey guys, my name's Christian Smedberg. I'm the marketing manager here at Weinig Holzer USA. Today, Michael Muskett and Sean Miller are here to talk to you about Luxan scanners. Uh, so we're gonna cut to them right now. And uh, when we're done with that, I'm gonna be talking to Sean as just a debrief about what we saw here today. So stay with us, check it out. Hey guys, uh, welcome here at Weinig. My name is Michael Mushkit and I'm the product manager at Weinig USA. And this is? Hi, I'm Sean Miller. I'm one of the field service uh, technician supervisors. I'm in charge of the cutting group for the Weinig group. And I've been asked to talk a little bit with you and Michael about uh, the Quantum 450 and the LuxScan CombiScan Evo we have here in line. That's right. Like Sean said, uh, we're actually going to run the machine today. So you, you will see some material running uh, through the system. Uh, Sean, like you said, we're going to see a scanner and a chop saw. Uh, can you just explain a little bit what a scanner does? So the scanner is going to look, uh, this particular scanner, we're going to look at all four sides of the board. We're going to scan it uh, for dimensional control. We're going to scan uh, for color. We're going to be looking for the defects on it. We're going to be using a variety of technologies, both color, black and white, uh, infrared lasers, dot lasers, and uh, what we call angle crack lasers will all be used to help make these decisions. All right, awesome. So. Uh, the scanner is actually going to inspect the board and then make a decision uh, based on a recipe that is uh, taught to the machine, is that right? Correct. So uh, the system is taught what good wood is and what bad wood is and then the onboard uh, optimizer that we have will be able to tell what products can accept which defects and which products uh, have to be completely clear. If we can optimize not only for yield but for value, we can do balanced optimization as well. So all that's available from the scanner and then we tell the saw not only uh, what lengths to cut but what kickers to use. All right, that's awesome. Um, so uh, can you give us maybe a little bit more input on uh, what kind of customers are using scanners today? All levels of uh, customers are using it. We have it in the kitchen cabinet industry. We have it in RV component parts. We have uh, uh, activities of finger joining and lineal molding customers are all using it. So we're across the whole gamut uh, and it comes down to the customer's needs and preferences and uh, more so of automation. Okay, awesome. Uh, so I would say uh, let's get started and maybe you want to um, just walk us through the equipment, show what we have and then run some boards and see what we can get out of sure, it. Sure, absolutely. Awesome, thank so you. So we'll start up here at the beginning of the machine and so on the dimpter, the line that we have here, it has its own infeed section and so we have material ready to go. And then it will uh, begin from the lateral transfer to the lineal transfer. So we'll be looking at the boards going through the scanner transports. Then it will go into the actual scanner body itself here. So you can see the LED lights are coming out through the screen, but that's all protected. Then it goes through another set of transports to hold the material while the board's going through the scanner. We come down a short in feed. Uh, this will be configured to your specific application of how long this needs to be. Then it comes into the Quantum 450 where the board is going to actually be cut to the lengths that you've specified, either fixed lengths or random lengths for finger joint. The material would be sorted uh, for the short waist. We'll go down the dimpter waste gate and then we go out onto the sort line where the pieces would be kicked. And this length of uh, this uh, sort melt would again be configured per application for you, Mr. Customer. So Christian, I'm gonna get ready to start the saw now. The scanner is already online and we'll run a few pieces.
So Christian, what I'd like to show you a little bit is on the scanner and some of the features and what we have and what it would look like for uh, our customers to use it. But the screens that we use are all touch screen, they're all full color, high definition screens. I'm gonna take the machine offline so we can talk about some of the other features. But basically, uh, there's two methods of operating and working with the machine. One is just your finger. If you can point, we can teach you how to be a scanner operator, okay? Uh, and then there's also, for the old school guys, we have the regular mouse that we can use, okay? But basically, board by board, the scanner is going to display all four sides and then also give us our optimizing solution down on the bottom. So again, you can, as in real time, you can see what's going on. We also have the capability to go back and look at previous decisions. If you're curious about something, okay? Um, the system displays different information as we're really running. That last board we ran had a yield of 93%. Overall, for the order we've been working on here in the shop, which is for a, a uh, panel processor for a customer that makes uh, glued up drawer sides, our yield's about 90.7% on uh, sap gum, which is the material they're using. Okay, it'll also tell me our total throughput and gives us uh, lineal and volumetric uh, readings of the material. Also tells us what uh, detection we're using. Show you the uh, optimizer, very simple, straightforward, able to use optimizer. Uh, you have different information. You have your lengths or the names of the products, the qualities, your lengths, your values, which kickers you want the system to use. You have a complete list. Once you build an order, it will remain in the remain as part of the order unless you delete it. I have a library where I can use the drag and drop feature to just add parts on the fly. I can also build the orders ahead of time and then just have the operator select the order as I need it. Whenever I make a change, I just save it. I can do this while the machine is running and the next board that goes through the scanner, those changes will be for real, okay? You also have a complete product library, so anytime you ever build a part, as long as you don't delete it, I can come back and get it from, from the library. So it's one, it's one and done, okay? And then the optimizer is only going to keep the parts we need to be running today, but I can always go to the library and grab it out. Show you a little bit about the qualities. I have a full capability of, of di putting different zones and different qualities around the parts. I can have different uh, top, different face and bottom, edge, and you can change your cross sections down the board as you like. Okay, I have rotations that are fully capable, which means I can take a knot uh, and put it, if it came through on the face, but it would work on the back of the piece, the software for the optimizer is smart enough to know that and can rotate that. And then if you were to put a printer on with the quantum or any other dimpter saw that we have, that part could be uh, printed with an arrow to show the stacker which way that piece needs to go so the value that we've added here at the uh, scanning and uh, optimizing chop saw line will be carried through to the molding department or the glue up department. Okay. Some other stuff that would be uh, good for our customers to know about the machines is the onboard statistics. So we're doing everything in an SQL database at this point and the idea is, is that we want to make these uh, reports easy to use they can be exported as a PDF they can be exported as a XLS spreadsheet for you we can put your machine on your network and map to a specific drive we also have an onboard USB port right here for the uh, your guy to put it on a on a thumb drive and take it up to and read the reports off I can keep the statistics uh, in a variety of different ways I can find out about specific boards. I can find out how my waste was come, how much came from optimization. I didn't have enough parts on, I didn't have the right turns on. How much of it was for my lead trims and tail trims? How much of it was, okay, I had 20 inches of good material, um, but I only had an 18. So all that adds up into here for you to be able to figure out and help you analyze what's going on. Where we have data that's available to you. Also, we keep track of um, the defects that we see that you've told us you want us to be able to see. Cracks, black knots, sound knots, open knots. And so you can track that as you're running to see, uh, hey, do I have a problem in the kiln? You know, this week on Red Oak, my cracks are way up. Uh, something must be going on in the kilns. 
and they have data to back that up to go back to our vendor and we can keep track of that not only by the order but by the supplier we can even break it down by the bundle if that's how you'd like to to process your information coming out of out of the scanner okay all of this we work with you uh, you come to Mooresville uh, we do training here uh, customer comes gets trained here we do a lot of the specie work here the way we've done our last few systems is the customer scanner shows up here their materials brought here we train the system on what what you want it to be called good wood bad wood cracks knots those types of things then we bring you here we have you go through the machine with us we do the training we teach you about gray targets how to do calibrations what are the maintenance points all that's done here in our facility and then when we come do the installation the scanners 90 95 percent of the way there we tweak a few things while we're there we reinforce the training and we can get you up and going very quickly with one saw two saws three saws or up to even four high speed optimizing saws with one scanner from LuxScan. so um, the scanner is capable of not only connecting with uh, the, the 450 series, it's also capable of being connected to any of the 200 series. Uh, this would be the, the topper end, the higher end, I guess is the right way to say it for scanning, and there are other options that, that exist for us, and we'd look forward to discussing with that with you in the future. everyone welcome back again my name is Christian Smedberg I'm the marketing manager here at Wine and Culture and I'm with uh, Sean Miller Sean thanks for doing that demo no problem Thank yeah you. that was uh, very informative so um, first off I mean how did it go for you that was your first online live demo right yes it was how was it it was good it was a uh a little less intimidating than actually being in front of the customer with them standing right next to you. Okay, yeah, you were only in front of about 500, so that's uh, Great, fine. great, good. <laughs> so, um, like uh, what we've done in the past uh, with other folks that have uh, been so gracious to do uh, live demos, I just wanted to have you up at the desk uh, to kind of talk about what we just saw. Sure. So, um, so, first off, the first question that came into my mind when watching us run some material and talk about the solutions that the scanner is uh, is giving. That was for one species, uh, but there's like who knows how many species out there. Right. Uh, so how does the scanner know, I guess, what's good and bad from one species to another? So part of that is the experience of our technicians of understanding what they know is good and bad and teaching the system what we call a classifier. Okay, so okay. there's a piece of software on the machine that's called a classifier, and you use it to, as a basic building block to identify what we want to call good wood and bad wood. And then through looking at that classifier, mm -hmm. and you build a set of rules to say, all right, I want that called a black knot, I want that called a sound knot, I want that called a crack, I want ah. that called wane. And so um, that's how it's always been done since the beginning. And as we look towards the future, uh, we, we have a new product coming down the road called the CombiScan Sense, where artificial intelligence will actually help us build the libraries. We'll identify material that's good or bad at the very beginning, mm -hmm. and then the system will teach itself. And so as customers uh, want to change, uh, 
we know that change is a part of everyday life. Absolutely. Today we might be heavy to poplar and tomorrow all of a sudden we might be wanting to run red oak. And sure. so you come back to us and purchase one of those libraries to use uh, with the sense. So uh, okay. uh, today we would come on site and teach the new species. Down yep. the road there will be some additional things to be able to done software wise. Okay, I see. So so when today when we're teaching a species then so uh do you have to start from scratch i guess uh, not, as not saying that this is a crack and this is a knot or not usually no because okay. we we've been doing this for over 20 years okay, okay? Right. Uh, with luck scan here uh the, the, as a daughter company of whining uh, mm -hmm. for, the, for probably the last 10 years um we've developed strategies here in the states where okay customer says hey i'm running red oak Okay, well, we've got a long history of running red oak and a poplar and I see. of cherry, and so we know where those basic settings are going to be, and that's where we start from, and then we tailor it specifically to your application where we have certain customers that want cracks called cracks, and we have other customers that call it check. Well, it doesn't really affect the detection part, mm -hmm. but it's uh, much more of changing the words and some of the software. You're categorizing it to the uh, labels that the customer wants. That's correct. I see. That's correct. And so when uh, when a common species is being run, uh, say for the first time, then there's a foundation that LuxScan has just because it's been around for so long correct. for that species. You know what's good, you know what's not, and you then you just build on top of that. That's correct. I That's see. how we start. I mean, poplar is a really good example for okay. us. It's a very right. popular yep. species, sure. right? And we have certain customers that purples and blacks and dark greens right. are a concern for. Yep. We have certain customers that it's not a concern for. But where we start at is with every customer of understanding we have to be able to see blacks and purples and dark greens. Right. And then we talk to the customer during the training time here or in one of the pre-sales visits we have to say, how important is that? And then we can turn that on, turn that off, and just be able to add those features. I see. So introducing a scanning line to a shop is a very uh, customized solution to that shop. I, I think that came out um, loud and clear during the demo and also with what you've just been saying. So kind of take us through in a little bit more detail, what is that, um, uh, what does that path look like? So when a shop says, yes, a scanning solution is is for us, uh, and they're going with LuxScan, kind of take us through step by step, what does the process of onboarding that shop look like? So the very first part is we start in the sales process right up front. Hey, Mr. Customer, what, what species do you need to run? Mm -hmm. What are the kind of defects that are important to you? Do I need to be able to have color? Is color important on the sides? Are you doing a lot of thicker material? Are you doing a lot of or are you doing a lot of panels and a lot of glue up and what's going on the sides may not necessarily be important from sure. a color point of view. Sure. Okay. Um, hey, Mr. Customer, is your material always going to be plain to a certain thickness? Yes or no. So we have a lot of customers running soft maple, hard maple. We know aren't going to be uh, well surfaced and it's the nature of the material. Of course. right. So sure. we may uh, talk about putting skip cameras on their machine. Okay. okay. So that will help us with our color detection and our overall detection, you know. Uh, so the sales process helps us define what machine we're going to deliver. And then once we've de decided what machine you need and you've decided that's what you want to purchase, then what we do is we've tried here lately to send one of our technicians mm -hmm. for a day, two days, spend with the customer, especially if they're already crayon marking. Uh, okay. Oh, okay, yeah, that's good. That's bad. Okay, why is this important? Hey, tell me about the color selection, and so we try to do that up front as well. So the technician, before the before they're even programming the machine, talking Correct. to the customer, they're actually observing, because every customer already has standards, right? right. They Correct. already have the standards. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to translate them from uh, either crayon marking or eyeballing to a program. Correct. And okay. so when when the technician goes to the site and hears the word from the customer, mm -hmm. he begins to understand what's critical to the customer, where does he need to focus more of his energy than, than certain other customers, sure. maybe the last time we did this, mm -hmm. okay? And so that way when we start with our foundational blocks, he already knows which things to make sure we're doing, okay. which things aren't so important. Right. And then the period is the scanner comes here, we, do the, we get your material here with the scanner, Right. We train the species, we do that work, we call you up and say, all right, this is the week we'd like for you to come spend with us. 
Then we do training in a classroom here where we have the software on either laptops you provided or computers we have. Okay. We right. train we train you on your software, on your material, we run your boards, and here we're getting feedback instantaneously, not only of how our optimizing solutions are for your products, right. setting up your qualities, but we're running your material at the same time. Uh -huh. So when we get to the site now, mm -hmm. I've got a lot of the elephant already eaten. That's okay? right. A lot of that has already been collected mm -hmm. and a lot of configuration has already been done. Correct. Okay. Yep. And like the last uh, last job we did, Christian, we uh, we took a computer and set up uh, here because of COVID. We couldn't go there. They couldn't come here for training. So we left a computer set up here in our facility mm -hmm. where the customer could get online and continue to work on his optimizer up until the time for us to come on site. Okay. And we took the file that was on this computer, loaded it onto I that see. machine. And so again, another bunch of work was already done right. before we ran the first board through the machine. Mm -hmm. And so our, um, we took basically uh, eight days to get one scanner and one chop saw set up in line like we, what we just well, videoed. Like what we just saw. And the customer was running boards, cutting boards on day 10, and he was happy with the results on day 10 and a half. Okay. okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Very good. Okay. So, well, that would lead me into my next question. So the actual install of a scanner, um, isn't much different than actually installing the machines. It's just another machine. It goes in line. Correct. Um, and it has its own power requirements, etc. Yep. networking requirements, I would uh, assume. And, and it's, it's there. So it's, um, it, it doesn't take a whole lot, say more effort. Uh, just a different skill set than, say, installing a chop saw or a molder or any other one. That's correct. I mean, and that's that's why we're doing all this upfront work is, is because the customer's made a significant investment in a scanner and a chop right. saw line. Right. He doesn't want to see a bunch of technicians sitting around on buckets wiring it all up. He wants it to get set on the ground, get it plugged in and get it running and start to produce product for him. So that's why we do all this work up front so we can get this done. Uh, on, a, on a single saw line like what you just saw here, we've, we've been averaging, I want to say, 12 days from clean floor to in production mm -hmm. on lines okay. that have multiple saws. The scanner's not the holdup. It's getting the other mechanical, electrical stuff connected up. And again, your point about it being, it's just for us, has to be treated as another machine in the line. Right. Okay, right. when we started doing this 15, 18 years ago, yes, the scanner was the bottleneck on an installation, okay? <laughs> sure, sure. Now, uh, being a daughter company of whining, help having some of their direction, mm -hmm. quick connects, doing different things, yep. technology evolving, we've gotten to where we'll get done our connections in four or five hours and we'll be waiting on the chop saw guys. <laughs> so. Well, I think that's an, that's an important point to, uh, to reassure um, our customer base of, is that while a scanner is uh, highly uh, technical and advanced in technology, uh, when we go install it in a line, it's a machine. Correct. It's a machine. And we hold it to the same standards. It gets delivered. We put it in. It it should be up and running. That is so, correct. Yeah. That's our that's our methodology and the mandate that we have here. Right. So, uh, Sean. So let me ask you this: Going back to training the scanner uh, or configuring the scanner mm -hmm. on species. So if you have a shop that's been uh, that's been set up and running, um, you know, uh, soft hard maple, red oak, uh, and then three years down the line they say, all right, well, you know, we've gotten some contracts and now we're going to be bringing in poplar. Mm -hmm. So what's that process like to now introduce a, a species after the onboarding process? So there's two different strategies that we've successfully used. One okay. is is that you say, all right, on this date, I need to be running Poplar. And we say, okay. <laughs> we you, say, okay. <laughs> okay, good, right. <laughs> great. Yeah, Mr. Customer, there's two ways we can do this. One is, is we can get online remotely because we ask that every machine be connected to the internet. We use TeamViewer to connect to remotely support you. Okay, right. We could get online with you and make sure the sensor is set up correctly and then have you run 20, 25 pieces of wood and then we can take all that information offline and build the classifier and the defect ah, table for okay, you sure. and reload it. The other way would be for us to send a technician out in the field and have him do that same work there on site. But it's usually, I would say, a, a 10 day, 12 day process from start to finish. I see. Okay. Now, if we're doing it remote, so that I think that's very interesting. So you're running some material through that scanner and not 
try and, and then you gather all that uh, data and then you build the classifier yes a after that it's not like we're trying to evaluate every little thing no you gather all that data it comes here to Mooresville okay mm -hmm. and then we build the classifier configuration for that scanner correct for that species and then we load it back on the machine we say all right mr customer we need you to block off some time we're going to load these settings we're going to run these boards together mm -hmm. you're going to say yep that defect's great that defect's great hey right. i need this green to be yep so some additional correct. training of the scanner can right. happen can happen and then then the day that you want to run it in production we would also set aside dedicated technician to be online with you to be able to react quickly to any little thing that we see. Mm -hmm. And he'd have that same information that's on your scanner on his laptop, so he could make a change there, yep. and then load it over to the machine and keep you going. That's a way we can handle being remote instead of being online right. sure. or in front of you. Makes sense, makes sense to me. So Sean, one more thing, because we've been talking about processes and we keep referring to our technicians. Um, Tell everybody, what does our LuxScan technician team look like? I mean, we have some tenured people mm -hmm. on board, and you yourself are fairly tenured. So first, start with you. How long have you been here? And uh, and then talk about the team that we got. So uh, I've been a part of the whining organization uh, for almost 20 years now in two different stints. <laughs> I've provided a, uh, I'm spackled to the company. Well, I, I work for Frank Horn in the technical services division. I have line nine anything deemed necessary by supervisor, which is like what I'm doing right now. Um, but uh, I've uh, served roles in the training department. Uh, I've served roles in sales. Uh, I came back to work for whining uh, six years ago uh, as diagnostics specifically for LuxScan. I've supported LuxScan here in the US uh, since probably 2006. So I've been through all the generations of machines with them. Um, and I take uh, our customers, uh, not a, uh, any wine customer, their needs very seriously. Uh, the team that I have to work with is I have a gentleman named Craig uh, Weyerbach, and Craig will be mad at me at the way I mispronounced his name for the 4,000th time. But uh, Craig, uh, Craig's our senior guy on our team. Uh, he's been here uh, a little over six and a half, almost seven years now. Okay. Yep. Uh, and he has done hardwoods, softwoods, knows our machines. Again, he's worked on all the generations. We have uh, Joe Zayat. He's been here a little over two years. Joe uh, has take, took on some challenges uh, immediately upon getting here. He's had factory training in Luxembourg. Uh, he's done a great job working mm -hmm. with uh, uh, some hardwood customers and a very high-speed application. and knock the ball out of the park there. We have uh, Tony Sales, who's uh, my specialist in setup of the machine. So he specializes in getting it electrically and mechanically put in line with oh, the I machine. Yep. And then he calls in Craig or Joe to come behind. I have uh, Matt Stam, who is a young man who has recently joined the company. Uh, he's had some remote COVID training. Okay. Uh, he, he started right as COVID was ramping up, so okay, uh, right. he's helped uh, remotely. And then we also have a gentleman named Ray Massey. Uh, Ray's been with us uh, for a while now, yeah, and he does, uh, he does uh, diagnostics. So his job is to sit in here in the office in Mooresville okay. or sit at home based on how we're doing COVID things. But he's, he's the primary line of support for all of our existing LuxScan customers here in North America. Gotcha. So... Uh, so a good team that is obviously focused on the customers, but then very well trained in LuxScan specific yes. uh, technology. Yes. Now, real quick before I let you go, um, just in case anyone's really wondering, LuxScan. LuxScan is based where? They're based in Luxembourg. Okay. Luxembourg, how about that? Okay. Okay, but <laughs> that's not why Lux is in the name. Lux is uh, the Latin word for light. And uh -huh. so that's where that came from. Um, the company is in Fuets, and I'm going to get in trouble with all my colleagues over there for mispronouncing that name, but we have our own factory there. We're producing the machines ourselves. We do the software ourselves. We do the research and development. It's all contained within uh, the whining organization, uh, the daughter company of LuxScan. Uh, we work closely with uh, both Dimter and with Ryman on developments of optimizers and capabilities of machines. We work with uh, whining on enclosures and get guidance from them right. on screens and all sure. that. So we're a we're a full integrated uh, integrated yeah. part of the organization, and that's part of what sets us apart. Is is we that's own right. everything from soup to nuts on 
on the scanner, on the optimizer, all that belongs inside the winding company. We feel that that sets us apart from everybody else that's in the market on that. Absolutely, 100% it does. Um, and just to kind of uh, backtrack just a little bit, because I think it's important for everyone to understand the the scanner itself is using technology that uh, that's developed by LuxScan. So yes. the scanner is built by LuxScan using technology that's built by LuxScan. It's talking to machines that are in the wine group, just like LuxScan is in the group. So Correct. it's all it's it's just one big capsule, really. Correct. And everything's integrated, and, and that's a great. Um, what am I trying to say? That's a great advantage for LuxScan, but. If anyone's been watching any of our videos that we've been putting up, that's really just a great advantage for any machine in the winding group. Correct. Is that you have uh, the ability to have both upstream and downstream from that machine, have other machines that are in the same group. You're talking to the same people. Correct. They're, uh, they're talking the same language. Yes. Um, so German most of the time. But Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's a, just... A, just a great benefit of anything in the wine uh, group and look is no uh, exception to that i agree completely so sean thanks for taking the time uh, to talk to us today if you guys have any questions comments about the video about what you saw prior um or if you have any questions for sean specifically put them in the feed we'll be monitoring the video uh, as we go forward also uh just a quick plug uh, coming up in August, we're doing our retool tour, and uh, scanners will be a part of that yes, on uh, Tuesday uh, when we're here in Mooresville. We're going to be live streaming. We'll have plenty of scanner action here. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a good time. Yep. All right. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Take care and stay healthy. Stay positive.